parked here on the side of the road here, uh, on the promenade in Barmouth. And uh, going towards the railway station. Inside uh, the, uh, the Barmouth railway station, the Victorian building. Some people just came in, so I, yeah, I, um, yeah, so this is now a, pro it was a tourist information here, uh, to tourist in the Barmouth Tourist Information Office, but now it's been taken over as a private business, but they still provide uh, tourist information. Yeah, this is, uh, as I say, a Victorian station, two platforms. You can see how long the platforms were, uh, because, uh, well, everyone, all the holiday makers back in Victorian times and the early part of the 20th century. Very long trains to accommodate them all. Okay, this is the extent of the uh, railway platform. But uh, in the old good old days, and, and I remember those times, uh, and the steam trains, they had, well, uh, uh, at least a dozen carriages. So they had these long platforms to accommodate them. And you can see, oh, that's uh, no longer, uh, well, they let the weeds grow. Yeah. This is the inside of the uh, railway carriage and uh, social distancing. Actually, it's the first time I've uh, caught a train since this uh, virus uh, business began. Oh, uh, well, uh, well, I haven't caught a train this year, so uh, luckily I'm in. Uh, well, there are some passengers coming on board. At the following principal stations, Fairbourne, Towin, Abu Dhabi, Dhabi Junction, Macomplough, Kairosus, Newtown. And wash or sanitise your hands regularly. And remember, don't travel if you're unwell. It's in the Barmouth Bridge. Cat Idris over there. Fairbourne. Unfortunately it is a bit breezy and uh, there's the railway station. You are here. I'm going to go down there to the seafront and walk along to the end and way up here to that point there and take the Wales coastal path and then cross over the bridge back to Barmouth. The main attraction from the tourist point of view of the, uh, the Fairbourne Miniature Railway. Okay, there it is, a little steam engine. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. There's the driver's cab. Yeah. Muy interesante. There's the carriages you go into. There's the carriages, mi miniature carriages, three of them. I'll just have a peek inside. Oh, oh, okay, this is the driver. Maybe the driver occupies that. Yeah, there's, obviously there's no one here today, so... Uh, yeah, go. I've got the place to myself. Okay, I'll uh, walk down this, the main drag, you might say, of Fairbourne, to the beach. Now this uh, seaside village has the dubious uh, distinction of being the first uh, coastal community to be written off uh, to the uh, rising sea levels. Uh, it was written off by, uh, well, <laughs> by the Gwynedd Council uh, and uh, they, they're not going to kind of protect it from the rising sea waters. It's breezy. I don't know how much you can hear me, 
can see it's quite a it's quite a pleasant community, mainly bungalows. Kind of basically retirement bungalows really. Here's the uh, I guess the local restaurant. Uh, yes, this is a modern village that we didn't exist here uh, before before 1890. Yeah. And of course most of these have been built since these bungalows have been built more recently. It's quite um, it's quite a large village, about 1,000 people live in here. I've reached the beachfront and uh, you can see the little, little railway line runs there along, well for maybe a mile, maybe more, uh, to the Penryn Point on the Maldach Estuary. Unfortunately, it's quite breezy today. These are concrete uh, feature, uh, concrete um, objects along here were put down during the Second World War to deter uh, uh, tanks from uh, well, invading this. Uh, <laughs> You know, you see born invasion maybe from uh, uh, poor old Adolf uh, if he decided to come this way. One of the longest Second World War coastal defences in the United Kingdom, built in 1940. Uh, five Type 24 bulletproof pillboxes, there's an example of one of them, and 650 concrete tank obstacles known as Dragon's Teeth. Muy, muy interesante. Huh? This is as far as I'll go. Uh, that's where the Dragon's Teeth ended. And uh, this is all part of the Wales Coast Path. And uh, so I'll just uh, retrace my steps briefly here and then go on to the beach. decided not to uh, walk along the beach. It is a little bit breezy today and uh, that, that, that kind of indicates the size of the uh, coastal defences here, uh, existing coastal defences, about roughly 15 feet high and of course and uh, so uh, apparently that's not sufficient. Now all these properties here again unfortunately it's very breezy I, I didn't think it would be this breezy today but all, all these properties uh, in Fairbourne uh, well uh, their values have dropped drastically since it was announced uh, they're going to be abandoned to the elements uh, so there's roughly about 1,000 people live live in Fairbourne right now so so they, uh, they don't have a long-term future. Yeah, the sun currently shining. Uh, mainly sunny today. Yeah, the, he's named that. Uh, this is um, basically an English-speaking community, and uh, is it, well an English settlement, you might say, beach bungalow. And uh, Fairbourne, the name English name Fairbourne doesn't have a Welsh. Uh, there's no Welsh equivalent. It's um, one of the few communities uh, in the North Wales, uh, well, in this area of North Wales, uh, that doesn't have, um, is not called an, a Welsh name. Uh, like um, a couple of miles away in Barmouth, the popular seaside resort of Barmouth, uh, 
that has uh, the Welsh name of Abermawr. Okay, that's where I came down earlier on. So I'm going to follow the, the railways down there. I'm going to follow the uh, back on the seafront and uh, go off here for about a mile, I think. It's an excellent beach. Uh, and I can see why the... Uh, well... They established this, this village back towards the end of the 19th century as a seaside resort because it's an excellent beach, really. Okay, there's the beach and the dragons... the line of dragon's teeth continues for a mile and a half, I believe. That's how long it is. But I'll just point out this bench. Like a cast iron wooden bench. Uh, I think they were... <laughs> they've been there since... Uh, well, since, since the village was established, I saw a date of 1905 on them. Huh. I just missed the train. Huh. No one in it, as far as I can see. Just stop for a cup of tea here, one pound. Okay, for, Fairborn Golf Club welcomes the public. Yeah, there's a, it's kind of like a small golf course there, just uh, at the Fairborn Golf Club. There it is, there's the golfers there, it's just a, a basically not much more than a miniature golf course. But it's a good day though, for golfing. Golf club is maybe a quarter of a mile down there, and a mile in the other direction, you can catch the ferry back to Barmouth. Uh, <laughs> Two pound fifty for a single down there. But I'll be turning uh, down here on the Wales coast path. substantial building in Barmouth, as is normally the case, is the parish church in small towns. Now that, uh, well, little steam train, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's on the way down here. Unfortunately, I'm a couple of hundred yards away from the uh, railway line, so I won't get too much of a view of it. There's Fairborn back there on the skyline. And I'm continuing to walk on this embankment and then I'll cross the bridge back to Barmouth. Now I, did, I didn't get a good look at the miniature steam railway, or well, miniature railway, but I'll get a good look at this one. It's actually stopping at more of a Maldach. No, it isn't. No, it's going straight through. A request stop. More of a Maldach uh, request stop. Looks like there's a couple of passengers waiting for a train. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, this way towards Barmouth Bridge. There's a lot of people on this uh, path that crosses the Barmouth Bridge because they because they go on the Maudach Trail, which is a popular, well, it's a popular cycle route, but it's also popular with walkers. Okay, so they, oh, September to December they're closing the uh, footpath. So that's uh, nice to know. Network Rail. Yeah, Network Rail. They're gonna do some work. It looks like they, well, yeah, I don't know. Barmouth Viaduct Restoration. 25 million pounds to upgrade the iconic landmark. Yeah, 
out like that, motorbike scramblers on this footpath. Okay, so um, I'm kind of lucky to have done this walk now because this bridge is going to shortly be closed for a major upgrade. Okay, uh, it's uh, this part. Of the, this part of the footpath narrows here at this point, uh, with this uh, well ancient uh, steel structure. Uh, so it's difficult to keep uh, social distancing. Just paid the the toll or the troll. Uh, one pound for one adult. But uh, okay. Coming into Barmouth, uh, which is uh, the nickname for uh, Barmouth, is uh, Little Birmingham by the Sea or Little Birmingham by the Sea. And there's Birmingham Garage. Yeah, and they're hiring out uh, cycles so you can uh, yeah, bike hire. £16 for the full day, and you can go to the uh, over the bridge and down Mount Ach Trail to Dolgechai, about a 10 mile bike ride. So this isn't really part of the, well it's not, obviously not part of Fairbourne, which is, and there's the last inn there. Yeah, the last inn before you, well before you depart to Birmingham maybe. These gardens are uh, all maintained by the last inn. And just in case the Germans decide to invade again, yeah, we've got defensive works here. The wind's died down a bit. Uh, over there, you can, you can just see it, is the balm of um, ferry. Yeah, I don't know. I can say I can't. Yeah, somewhere over there. Yeah. Balm of ferry. It runs till the end of October. Uh, the wind's died down now and uh, it's quite pleasant quite warm in the sunshine I'm coming to the end of this walk uh, my car is about a well, quarter of a mile up there ok this is uh, more or less coming to the end of this walk uh, the sun's come out nice get a cup of coffee. There's the amusement park, of course, it's closed down for the season of the winter.